I'm going to show images of MR spectroscopy. And since I did not study chemistry nor physics, this is going to be very basic. The brain is good for spectroscopy because it doesn't move. And you can do spectroscopy with different nuclei. For example, carbon, phosphor, or the most used is a proton. And with proton spectroscopy, you can use your normal clinical MR scanner and your normal coils, and you only need to buy some software. If you put a proton in a magnetic field, it starts to resonate at its own Larmor frequency. And there are slight differences in this frequency that are used for spectroscopy. If the nucleus is shielded by more electrons, it will experience a weaker magnetic field and it will have a different frequency than a proton surrounded by lesser electrons. So from the frequency you can deduct information about the structure of the molecule. And there are two things that you can use for the deduction of the structure. That's the coupling, which are the surrounding nuclei and the chemical environment, and that's the shift. If you look, for example, at this lactate molecule, you can see that the proton is located in different groups, which explains why lactate is a double peak. Most protons are located in water and in fat, and because the brain only has a lot of water and no macroscopic fat, you only have to suppress the water peak in the brain which also makes it a very good tissue for spectroscopy. And after suppressing the water, you can rescale the y-axis and see the other metabolites that occur in much lower concentrations. The resonance frequency of the proton depends on the field strength. And to make the spectroscopy images between different scanners more comparable, the frequency of the resonance is divided by the frequency that depends on the magnetic field, and then you get parts per million, which makes that at two parts per million, the NAA peak is always located independent of the field strength. If you look at the x-axis, you can see that it's inverted. At zero is a molecule called TMS, which is silicon surrounded by four metal groups and protons ar arranged very symmetrically. And there are three large peaks in the brain, which are alphabetically choline, creatine and NAA, so it's a good thing the scale has been inverted. If you go to higher field strength, the chemical shift contributes to the better separation of the different peaks. So you can see that choline and creatine are better separated at 3 tesla than at 1.5 tesla. It never reaches zero, but it dips deeper. You can do multivoxel spectroscopy. So then you have an actual slice of the brain with a raster in it, and you can look at the metabolites in each voxel. This is usually done with a long echo time. Or you can do single voxel spectroscopy, and you can use short echo time or long echo time. Short echo time has more contamination, but also more metabolites than the longer echo time. And you can also see that at 135 milliseconds, the lactate peak inverts. If we start to look at the peaks that you should usually see in the brain, then there's the largest one, which is NAA, and this is a neuronal marker. It's a metabolite formed in the mitochondria of the neurons and neuronal precursors, and this should always be the largest peak 
in the brain. If there's no neuronal tissue, so for example in a lymphoma or a metastasis, it's absent. And if you have a glial tumor, it's decreased. The creatine peak is composed of two metabolites and it's a marker of the metabolism. And because this is a fairly constant peak, it is used for ratios with NAA and choline. Choline is a marker of cell membrane turnover and this is increased in all different kinds of tumors and in demyelination. At short echo time you can also see an MY peak and if you look at the molecule you can see that it resembles glucose and this is a glial marker. So it's increased in low-grade glioma and in demyelination. If you eyeball the spectroscopy at short echo time you can see that there is a line between MI, creatine and NAA and this should be about 45 degrees. This is called Hunter's angle and it's a good rule of thumb to just eyeball if the concentrations are normal of the metabolites. And for the ones that have paid really really close attention I mentioned that lactate is a double peak, but there is a proton in three different groups. But the 4.1 parts per million lactate peak gets suppressed in the water suppression on the left side of the x-axis. Almost all diseases have high choline, low NAA. There is only one disease that has high NAA and that's Canavan and we're going to look at that next time.